These are the 12 creams most used in desserts. With these videos, you will learn the tricks and techniques to prepare them correctly. Then, you just have to use your imagination and make your own combinations to get amazing desserts. The 12 creams most used in desserts. Hi, I'm Carlos Salgado. Making a good cream is not the real challenge. The real challenge is saving it from a sudden accident. Today we'll see the solutions to the most common mistakes when making a cream. This tutorial was created in response to the numerous comments, questions and doubts that were appearing during the 12 creams tutorials. If you have not seen them yet, the links are in the description of this video. There, you will find the recipes and all the instructions for each of the 12 creams. Today you will also see some options for those allergic to dairy, eggs or with sugar issues. And I'll give you some tips for those recipes that need a thermometer and you don't have one at the time of the preparation. But remember, precision and good quality ingredients are the secrets to success. That's why it's always worth having a scale and a thermometer. At the end of this tutorial, you will have access to a list of uses for each of the 12 creams illustrated with examples. You will find this list written in the description of this video. So let's start this list with the tips, mistakes and solutions in the preparation of the 12 creams. First and foremost, let's talk about gelatin. Gelatin could make a big difference in some creams. I always use gelatin sheets. If you only have gelatin powder, here is the equivalence. One sheet of 2 grams of gelatin is equivalent to 2 grams of gelatin powder. To hydrate the gelatin sheets, you only need plenty of cold water. That's why ice water is used. To hydrate the gelatin powder, you need 6 times its weight in water. In other words, to hydrate 2 grams of gelatin powder, you need 12 grams of water. First, add the water and then the gelatin powder. Stir quickly and wait for a sponge to form. If you have to measure very small portions and the scale is not a precision scale, here is this very simple rule. Half teaspoon of gelatin powder equals approximately 2 grams. To hydrate, you can use a tablespoon of water that is equivalent to approximately 12 grams. Finally, remember that gelatin must always be dissolved in a hot liquid. If you want to use a sugar substitute, there are products such as Granulated Splenda. When using these products, remember that the weight will be the same as for plain sugar. If you are allergic to dairy, you can use rice or oat milk instead. The amounts are the same. And if you are allergic to eggs, I'll show you a few options during this video. Now, let's move on to our tour about creams. Chantilly cream Should be beaten very cold. If the workplace is very hot, it's advisable to place the mixer bowl in the freezer for a few minutes before whipping the cream. It should be sweetened up to a maximum of 20% of the weight of the heavy cream in powdered sugar. This means that for every 100 grams of heavy cream, a maximum of 20 grams of sugar is added. I always add only 10% of sugar. For best results, add the sugar after the heavy cream starts showing some consistency. It can be flavored with any kind of zest, essence or vanilla seeds. When it gets over with, just add a bit of heavy cream. Whip again and you will have the chantilly back.
But if you see that the fat and protein get separated, you can no longer recover the chantilly at the moment, but you can recover the heavy cream. You just have to warm up everything. Don't let it boil. Emulsify very well with a hand mixer. Then wrap and refrigerate. Once it's cold, you could whip it again. and you will get the perfect chantilly cream. For those who want a more stable chantilly, I suggest using the recipe for chantilly with mascarpone. If you don't want to use mascarpone, here is this tip. Use a sheet of 2 grams of gelatin for every 200 grams of heavy cream. Hydrate the gelatin and dissolve it in a little amount of hot heavy cream. Let it cool off a little. Whip most of the heavy cream a little. Then add the heavy cream with the gelatin. Whip until getting the perfect texture. Refrigerate a bit and then it will be ready to use. You can also make a variant of the chocolate chantilly recipe, but with white chocolate and vanilla. The night before, Boil 500 grams of heavy cream and 100 grams of white chocolate plus natural vanilla or essence. You don't need to add sugar. The next day whip it and voila! If you don't find heavy cream in the area, but need whipped cream for some dessert, here is a homemade recipe that could be very useful. You just have to heat 50% of milk with 50% of butter. That means that to get 100 grams of heavy cream, you need 50 grams of whole milk and 50 grams of butter. Heat, emulsify very well, wrap, refrigerate and whip once cold and you will get a perfect chantilly cream. Now we move on to the creme anglaise. The creme anglaise should be cooked to a maximum of 184 Fahrenheit or 84 Celsius. If you don't have a thermometer, here are these tips to get a perfect creme anglaise. With or without a thermometer, you should have a bowl with ice and water ready or what is called Colvin Marie. Cook the cream over medium heat and stirring constantly. When you start feeling that the spatula slides very easily on the surface of the pan, you are almost done. Then you will feel a strong amount of steam releasing from the cream. In a matter of seconds, the cream will get thicker. It's time to remove it from the heat quickly. Immediately strain it over the cold vein marie. Keep stirring to cool off the cream. Wrap and refrigerate. You could also check with your finger if the cream coats the spatula. If the cream boils, it will be scrambled. In this case, you must emulsify it very well with a hand mixer. Strain and add a little milk until you get the right consistency. Wrap and refrigerate. And here you have a perfect creme anglaise. If the creme anglaise was frozen, just let it defrost. Warm it up a little in a bain marie or the microwave. And it will be ready. For a dairy-free creme anglaise, use rice or oat milk. 
If you want a dairy free and egg free creme anglaise, here is an alternative. Heat 250 grams of rice milk with about 35 grams of powdered sugar. Mix a small part of the milk with 8 grams of cornstarch. Combine everything and bring to a simmer. Let it thicken. You can add a little vanilla and turmeric to give a little color. And here you have a dairy free and egg free creme anglaise. Now we continue with the pastry cream. It's a very common mistake to get a pastry cream with some lumps. This could be avoided by beating the yolks very well with the cornstarch or flour. Here is one tip. Mix the sugar with the cornstarch before adding to the yolks. When the pastry cream is ready, always pour the first without touching the bottom of the pan with the spatula. This helps you to make sure that there is no burnt crust on the bottom and avoids contaminating the cream with pieces of overcooked or even burnt cream. Once you are sure that there is no crust on the bottom, proceed to pour all the cream with the help of the spatula. Wrap it, refrigerate to get pasteurized and then smooth it out well. And here you have a perfect pastry cream. If the coaster was frozen, you just have to let it froze and smooth a little. If you want a dairy-free pastry cream, just use rice or oat milk instead. The result is quite similar. And if you want a dairy and egg-free pastry cream, an option is to prepare a very simple cream. 250 grams of rice milk, 75 grams of sugar, 35 grams of cornstarch and a touch of vanilla. Heat the milk. Combine everything including vanilla. You can add a little turmeric to give some color. Boil and voila! A custard which works perfectly as a dairy egg gluten-free pastry cream. For a chocolate version, Use 25 grams of cornstarch and add 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder at the end. Now we move on to the muslin cream. If for some reason the butter and the pastry cream were not at room temperature, then the muslin cream will get separated. In that case, heat a little water and beat the cream in a vein marie. Then, beat and smooth it in a cold vein marie. And you will have a perfect muslin cream ready to use. If the muslin cream was frozen, you just have to let it froze until it reaches room temperature. And you will have it ready to use. The same works for the buttercream. If for some reason when adding the butter to the yolks mixture or to the Italian meringue both were not at room temperature, the mixture will separate. To fix this, emulsify the mixture in a vein marie. Then, beat in a cold vein marie and that's it. If the buttercream was frozen, you just have to let it reach room temperature and it will be ready to use. If you don't have a thermometer and want to make buttercream with a vase of pate bomb or an Italian meringue, here you have some tips and tricks. For both, 
the pate bomb and the Italian merengue, the temperature of the syrup must reach 240 Fahrenheit or 116 Celsius. When the syrup is boiling, you must be aware when the boiling slows down a little. At that moment, with a spoon, drop a little syrup from above. If a thread is formed without breaking, it will mean that the syrup is at 235 Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius. I would say that at that moment, you could let the syrup boil for about 30 seconds and take it to the mixer bowl. But if you want to be more sure, lower the heat and in a small container with cold water, drop a little syrup. If a soft bowl forms, it will be ready. At that moment, very quickly, remove the pan from the heat and take it to the mixer bowl. And you will get a perfect Italian meringue ready to use as a base for buttercream. Another option for buttercream is the American version. It's very easy to make. So you have to cream 225 grams of butter at room temperature. Then add little by little 450 grams of powdered sugar. And finally, 75 grams of heavy cream, vanilla, or the essence of your choice. For the chocolate version, use 325 grams of powdered sugar and 125 grams of cocoa powder. And now, we are going to let our imagination fly with all the possibilities that the 12 cranes offer to us. The pastry cream. Perfect for fillings of all kinds, extremely stable. The chantilly cream, delicious with fruit, ideal for fillings. Perfect for decorating and to lighten textures and flavors. The ganache, one of the best for fillings and decorations. The creme anglaise, the best side par excellence, also delicious with fruit. The Bavarian cream, with a mousse texture, it's extremely versatile. It can serve as a filling. The muslin cream, ideal for cakes, especially with fruits, very stable. The almond cream and frangipan, delicious when they are baked with fruits or even as fillings. The shibus cream, perfect for flambe. The Diplomat Cream, extremely subtle, perfect for fillings of all kinds. The Cremant, ideal for fillings, extremely delicate, with a texture similar to an ice cream, very stable. Finally, the buttercream, perfect for cakes, extremely stable.
I hope you get inspired with all these ideas with the 12 creams. I also hope you find useful all these tips when preparing creams, as well as the possible solutions when having an inconvenience or an accident. The recipes that we saw here with dairy-free and egg-free alternatives and the list with all the possibilities for each cream are available in the description of this video. The original recipes of the creams are available in the tutorials of the 12 creams. You can find the links in the description. Remember, all the videos have a version in English, Spanish and Portuguese. If you like this tutorial, please give a like. And if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to receive more pastry lessons. Thanks for joining me and see you soon.